Right, just a quick recap on working out uh, reactions and whatnot. Consider this simply supported beam. Let's say the distance between the supports is 5 meters. That's reaction A, or reaction left RL if you like, and that's reaction B or RR for reaction right. <coughs> we'll not put a load right in the middle because um, we wouldn't bother working that out, it'd just be halved between A and B. Let's say we've got a 50 kilonewton load, which is, we'll keep it easy, it's 2 meters from RA and consequently 3 meters from RB. Alright, we'll solve this. We'll work out uh, RA first. So to work out RA, take moments at RB. Uh, what we're going to do is bear with us a sec, clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise moments. Now, <coughs> when we take moments at RB, it means we're going to put a pivot point here. And we're going to assess, is this force turning it clockwise or anti-clockwise, and is this force turning it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And from that balancing act, we'll be able to work out what RA is. So we'll take RA first. Um, so RA, as you can see, is pushing, if you're, al if you're allowing this beam to, to spin, to pivot at that point, it would be pushing it round that way, which is definitely clockwise. So for clockwise moments, we've got RA, whatever that is. We don't know the force yet. That's why we're working this out. We're trying to work out what that is. So the unknown RA has got to be in the equation somewhere. <coughs> RA times by its distance to RB, which is 5 metres. Um, there are no other forces to contend with that are pushing clockwise, so we can put equals. Then anti-clockwise, if you allowed that to push down and this were pivoted here, it would be turning anti-clockwise. So we're, that's going to be balanced out with 50 kilonewtons times by its distance to RB, which is 3 metres. So we can say then, summarising, RA times 5, a neater way of writing that is 5RA, equals 50 times 3, <coughs> which is of course 150. So 5 times RA is 150. We don't want to know 5 times RA, we want to know 1RA. So RA equals 150. We take times 5 across, which means divided by 5. Therefore, RA equals 150 divided by 5 is 30 kilonewtons. All well and good. Let's work out RB now. I'll use a different colour. Uh, for RB, take moments at RA. Clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise. This time the pivot is at this end. <coughs> so RB is, is pushing up that way. And if you allow, if the pivot was here this time, like a lever, and you allowed that to push up, that would definitely start spinning in an anti-clockwise direction. So I've got RB times by its distance to this pivot, which is 5 metres. Balanced out with the 50 this time is pushing down that way because the pivot's moved from that end to this end. So it's actually turning that way, which would make it spin clockwise. So we've got 50 times by, and its distance this time is 2. So simplifying that, 50 times 2 is 100 equals RB times 5 is 5RB. So in this case then, we don't want to know 5 times RB, we want to know RB on its own. So 100 divided by 5 will give us 1RB. So 100 divided by 5 is of course 20 kilonewtons. That's the value for RB. And we're going to check this. Uh, <coughs> So we're going to do check, um, forces up equals forces down. So coming down, we've got 50 kilonewtons. And going up, we've got RA and RB. Well, RA is 30 kilonewtons and RB is 20 kilonewtons. So 30 plus 20 does equal 50. 30 plus 20 equals 50, and that's already 50. So yes, it checks. You've calculated that correctly. 
<coughs> use a mobile phone app, something like um, Force Effects by Autodesk or um, BendingMomentDiagram.com um, to verify these. Let's do another one now, slightly more complicated. Uh, this is just for simply supported beam point loads. We'll move on to UDLs and all that in another video. This case, we'll have a cantilever. Um, if you think this is going to jump ahead too much, just rewind and watch that bit again. Um, that's your easiest bet. That's the beauty with videos. You can keep watching the same bit until you need until uh, you understand a little better. So this, we've got a point load here of 40 kilonewtons, and a load here right on the end of 30 kilonewtons. <coughs> This is reaction A, this is reaction B. Let's say, let's just do the distance in another colour. Let's say that distance is 2 metres. The distance between that and that is 3 metres. And the distance between that and that is 1.5 metres. Uh, probably look a little neater if I put that there as 3 metres. Right then, so we know um, where the loads are, we just don't know what RA and RB is, but it's the same technique as before. So we'll work RA out in red. So RA, take moments at RB, clockwise equals anti-clockwise. Um, <coughs> in this case, so the, the mom take moments at RB means put a pivot at RB, allow it to spin freely at RB. So if this was a long steel bar, or whatever, you're putting your finger here underneath where RB is, and then by putting different weights on, it'll spin in different ways. That's all we're doing, right? It's just a beam with a pivot point, like a seesaw, right? And we're putting different weights on it. Um, <coughs> all right, so to calculate this, so we've got RA, and if this was a beam on a seesaw and RA were pushing up, that would definitely spin it that way, which would be clockwise. So we've got RA times by its distance to RB, which is going to be 2 add 3, which will be 5 metres. So it's 5 again. Um, we've got this 40 pushing that way, and that's going to be anti-clockwise. But we've also got this force here pushing that way, which will be clockwise. That's definitely moving clockwise. That's moving anti-clockwise. That's moving clockwise. So we've got 30. Um, that's just one. So we've got RA times 5 and then another clockwise force, we'll put them in brackets, of 30 times by 1.5. Again, if I've jumped forward too soon, usually you'd do 5 or 10 examples like that. But because it's a video and you can rewind, you'll have to just rewind and watch that again. So we've got RA times 5, that's one <coughs> uh, clockwise force. That's that one. And then we've got 30 times 1.5. That's another clockwise force. And it equals, there's only one force left, and that's going anti-clockwise, um, which is 40 times by its distance to this pivot, pivot, I should say, which is 3. All right, so let's simplify this. RA times 5 is 5RA, plus 30 times 1.5 is 45, equals... 40 times 3 is, of course, 120. <coughs> now, to, to rearrange this, then, we'll take add 45 across first. This is transposition of formula. This is nothing to do with work out and ending moments, really. This is uh, just pure math. So, take plus 45 across. That's going to give us 120 minus 45. Still got 5RA here. And we don't want to know 5 times RA. We want to know just RA on its own. So we're going to do with RA equals. So we've already got 120 minus 45 already there. So because all that's already there, all that gets divided by 5. So we can simplify that again. So RA equals. <coughs> in fact, uh, have I got a calculator on here? I will have, yes. So straightforward enough, 120 minus 45. Of course, that's 75. I'll write it all in and then divide that by 5. 
<coughs> 75 divided by 5 equals 15. So RA equals 15 kilonewtons. And we know it's in kilonewtons because the original question was in kilonewtons. Right, let's move on to RB. I'm going to draw that out again because it's a right mess. Uh, so, <coughs> um, RA, RB, that's 30, that's 45, sorry, no, it's not, it's 40. And then the distances are, that's 2, that's 3, and that's 1.5. I'm being very lazy now using engineering notation. It's implied that 1.5 goes to there, and 3 goes between there and there. <coughs> anyway, let's work out our, um, RB. So for RB, take moments at RA. So this time, take moments at RA means put your pivot at RA. So I've got this force pushing uh, clockwise. I've got RB pushing anti-clockwise. And I've got 30 pushing clockwise. So clockwise equals anti-clockwise. <coughs> We've got 40 times by its distance to this pivot, which is 2. That's one um, moment if you like add on another that's that clockwise one and then there's another clockwise one of 30 times its distance all the way to that pivot which is all of those added up so it's going to be 30 times by its lever arm of 6.5 there are no other clockwise ones so we're on to anti-clockwise now which is going to be RB remember we need an unknown in there that's the whole point of doing this times by its distance to that pivot which will be 5. The biggest mistake people make is instead of putting 5 the distance to the pivot they'll put 3 or you know some other distance you have to it's always related to that pivot point. <coughs> so in this case 40 times 2 is 80 um, plus and then we've got 30 uh, times by 6.5 and that's 195 equals 5RB. So we've got 195 at 80. That's 275 equals 5RB. Oops. So we don't want to know 5 times RB, we want to know 1RB. So we're going to have to do 275 divided by 5 equals RB. And that's going to be uh, <coughs> 275 divided by 5 equals 55 kilonewtons. All right, let's do a check. So for this, we're going to do um, check up equals down. So up, we've got 15 plus 55 equals whatever's coming down which is going to be 40 add 30 equals 40 plus 30 so 15 add 55 is 70 40 add 30 is 70 oops put 700 like an idiot uh, 70 that checks um, <coughs> that's it for the time being so for yourself uh, just draw, just make it up, you know, that's RA, that's RB, that's 4 metres between them, that's 2 metres, that's 1 metre off, and it's, uh, I'll say 60 kilonewtons, that's in the middle, that's mid-span, uh, so that's 2 and that's 2, and that's, let's say, 50 kilonewtons, and then just work it out from there, and then check it in a app or a website. There you go.